Well, I, I, went, I started at OCA, which didn't have the D at that time, thank God. But, uh, uh, in 1975, and uh, it just happened to be, I suppose, uh, concurrent with uh, a lot of different uh, things that were happening in society, I suppose. It was a whole confluence of art and music, and uh, I think uh, I, was, I was talking with John about this uh, a few days ago uh, during an interview, and we were talking about how absolutely stifling mainstream culture was in the 70s, and it, it's always shocking to me how people always want to bring it back, like fashion-wise, orange and brown is back, you know, and, and you know, wide pants and some all sorts of other stuff. And the 70s, in some respects, was at least on a mainstream level, one of the worst decades for design, for music, uh, unless you were doing something that, at that point, a lot of people hadn't heard. Um, and so, you know, the art college here was kind of a huge laboratory for that. Um, we had the Beverly Tavern, which was just south of us, which uh, sadly is no longer here. And um, there was a very strong mix between artists getting involved in music and musicians getting involved in art and, and all sorts of sort of performance art and, and all the, the barriers started coming down. And this wasn't apparent to the mainstream culture. And, and the thing about what was going on at that time, and I, I still think only recently uh, this has changed, but up until now, uh, it, it's really the most, one of the most underdocumented periods of not only perhaps art, but also music in Toronto and Canadian history. I came back to the city from India, North Africa, and England. I'd been away from, I went to, on, on the road when I was about 18. Back to the university, we went to um, England for a bit, and then traveled as one does from England across Europe and into the Middle East and Asia, and lived in Morocco for a year, and uh, back in England for a bit. And after seven years, came wandering back to Toronto, <coughs> partly because I figured out that in England, you could um, you could pass through walls, you know, whenever you're an immigrant to another country, you sort of pass through walls for a bit because you're ignorant, and then you hit walls that you can't even see because you're so ignorant, and, and you, you know, you can never change anything. So I kind of came back to Toronto thinking, this is one of the most amazing places on earth. I came back grateful, like we all sort of do now, I think, from travels, perhaps. It's kind of a tabula rasa. It's a bit annoying. It's such a baby country. It's doesn't hasn't accomplished anything, and yet it's a, sort of a smart act. But you know, because it's only so few hundreds of years old compared to the places I've been living. But it also seemed touchingly young and malleable and influenceable and shapeable. You know, so that's that's how I felt about the city when I got back. Uh, so I'd just like to introduce myself. My name is John Hamilton, and. Uh, I am not an artist. I'm probably just a tradesman who has a few delusions of artistic grandeur on occasion. Uh, I play drums in the diodes, and I guess I still do because there's talk now that we're going to be doing a fall tour uh, with Rough Trade and Blue Peter. Uh, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed for that. That would be kind of a, a fun one. They said it would be in soft seat halls for those of us who prefer <laughs> soft seats. <laughs> So that might mean things like the uh, music hall and the dance floor and stuff, so I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, my main claim to fame, of course, is being a member of the Diodes, and uh, I came down to Queen Street actually a couple of years before the Diodes started in 1974. Uh, I had been a typical Toronto sort of tradesman musician who had played in cover bands since he was a kid in high school. And I made the mistake of picking up uh, Isadora Duncan's My Life uh, from the delete book pile one day and read it and sort of got the art disease and uh, decided that I wanted to start to, you know, writing my own songs and things like that. So um, I started putting together some bands. And there was no place where you could really play original music in Toronto at that point, um, except for the Beverly Tavern which had been a blues bar, which was the art music of uh, the late 60s and early 70s, but it had kind of fallen into a sleepy, uh, 
comatose state at that point, so I approached them to see if we could start playing there with my daily planet bands, and I started doing some original music there in the fall of 74 and played there through 75 and 76. And then the new wave scene started exploding and I met the Dials and decided to throw my lot in with the Dials because they were basically the most intelligent guys I'd ever met playing the band. And uh, we had a little bit of success and uh, we started our own club down the street that you may have heard of, the Crash and Burn. Um, the main attraction to Queen Street, I think, for me was OCA, was the original uh, drawing card because I had a friend the older brother of uh, Ben Rasmussen and Johnny and G. Ray, Steve Rasmussen was going there. We came down here and we'd go to the Beverly Tavern. And then, of course, one of the main things was that it was fairly cheap space here for uh, to live or to rehearse in if you were a dancer or a band or whatever you needed. Large studio spaces and there were empty second floors above most of the stores that you could get for hundred dollars or so a month, so artists tend to gravitate here because of that reason. This is my review of those years, and it's called uh, Four or Five Failed Attempts at a Feminist Revolution. <laughs> I'm sorry, so sorry, such a fool. I never knew that love could be so cruel. Oh. <laughs> Number one. 1978. All of the men. That turned out not to be uh, feasible. <laughs> Nineteen eighty-one to eighty-nine, uh, and uh, let's see. Well, since Ronald, <laughs> sorry, the, the the face changed over the years. Ronald. Now I 
prayed to a silent justice. Please forgive my crime. 